Welcome back. This is part two of Twilight Hues. Three panels, flips, collage, and an envelope. So we're going to come right back in where we left off on the last one. And hopefully you guys have subscribed below. If you haven't, this is your chance. Subscribe below. Now let's get started. Okay, here we are back. Getting started. If you haven't watched part one, I would suggest to go ahead and click back. There'll be a link below or I'll put a card above and you can watch it. So now we're getting started in with the third panel of the lower accordion and kind of continuing on with the same look and feel with the torn papers. And these that you see right here, the one that I'm, I'm doing, the gilded deckled edge is in fact one of our printable papers. There's a technique that, there's another video for how that is done, but basically it, it is sparkled with the same watercolor, clear watercolors that you see there, along with Mod Podging over it to kind of seal it. That's just a basic rundown, but we do have full length videos showing exactly how to do that process. And now, what's happening here is just figuring out which is going to be the next panel and what pieces and parts are going to go with that. Both on the outer part because these all, all of the lower panel accordions are going to, or of panels on the accordion are going to actually flip open. And in the very beginning of part one, you saw a lot of the, the laying out and deciding which colors. And that, that always changes throughout any of these projects that we do. And I'm sure that it's probably the same for you. It's always good to have a plan. But sometimes as you move along, these are very organic kind of projects. So they do evolve and change. You can see here, just trying to decide which ones are going to go best with that envelope because I did know that for sure that was going to be incorporated in the interior flip open of this particular panel, which then led into, all right, well, what's going to then be the one after it? And even at this point, there's still some deciding on, is it going to flip up or all of them flip down? Finally, it was decided that it was best that they all flipped down because of how the end result was going to be with the adjoined top accordion and bottom accordion. And I knew I didn't want them, any of the flips, to cover up what was done on the top. And here you're going to see the first two panels. Um, I did cut out a lot of the construction of, or the assembly of the front parts of those because you'll see more in the end. I ended up really changing the look of those simply again because of the organic nature of the build that they didn't really flow as well. They look great here and those two look great with one another, but once the rest of these panels are built out, it just didn't quite flow. And you'll see that as you watch through to the other parts of Twilight Hues. Now, one of the things that working with these paint swatches is they chip a bit. So that's one of the reason I had the marker out. It just helped kind of clean up those edges a bit. Um, and then once they are sealed, everything seems to be fine. Now this is actually some of our, our handmade papers. And a lot of times they start out as just catch paper and that's kind of exactly what some of that is there with the pink and the purple and all the yellow. And then we come back and either, because we then know we're going to start using it with a particular project, which this one we did with the Twilight Hues, went ahead, um, any of the white bits came back in with purples, pinks, and really made it match up nicely to the rest of 
that co color scheme of the twilight hues. And a lot of times these are the, also the papers that then end up in the next set or we will create actual printables, a layering. Most of our printables will be multiple handmade papers put together or altered in some way so that they are very different and give just a little bit more, a, a richer feel to them. Now, this is where I bring in the textured elements and one of which is using the embossing folders. This is a really great one and worked perfectly with that floral drawing. And, and it really was a drawing and then <laughs> mixed media on the envelope above. But the petal, that pattern was such a nice rep repetition. And as you can see, my little helper is dropping off some things for her mommy. And now you can kind of see that particular panel coming together. And now you can see also that still kind of deciding whether that was going to flip up or down. I, I was still struggling with that whole idea that if if the panels flipped up that that the connection wasn't going to work as well. Now just digging through P's stash of brush -o flowers that she did not too long ago. And again, it was about the same time that the envelope was done, but two different times and that particular flower envelope has we've tried to get it in a couple of different projects and finally this is its home for sure and then this little flower went perfectly with it what was so crazy is that th they look like they were done at the exact same time when in fact they were not just similar techniques because they both were brushos along with I believe lots, no, probably about four or five different things. For sure colored pencil and for sure alcohol ink markers. But there could be a few other things kind of thrown in there at times. Now, I wanted to make sure that I had the magnet connection on this one done before making any other decisions because a lot of times the magnet connection is the last thing that happens and I usually have to kind of cover it up somehow but this particular one worked out very nicely well thought out great placement I'm very happy with it overall. Although it was a bit of a struggle even getting it lined up and then flowing properly, I think it got turned around a couple of different times, but in the end, it all worked out. That same sheet of paper, it was just a long run because we had, like I said, so it started out as one of our possible contenders for the accordion, like the back piece the the folded run but um it just didn't quite color wise make sense to use it for that and that's how it ended up just being you know more paper to collage with and nothing real special done to it where some of our papers we really do put a lot of either stamping or other things into it those are usually the ones that end up becoming a printable if you guys are really finding inspiration enjoyment you just like hanging out with us subscribe below hit the bell we do this once a week and hopefully there'll be something we do product videos and all sorts of things and really enjoy hanging out with you running that exact same embossing folder at the, at 
thought it was a really cool idea that it kind of opens up like a flower since this is the very floral interior flip open along with its magnet connection you can see i was still thinking it was going to go to the top and <laughs> you'll, you'll see in a moment here how it all flips around and changes went a little early with the tape on there but you know sometimes just to get a little ahead of myself thank goodness i do have the freezer paper down on the back or on the desk so even when it was when i was doing this part here it stuck to it but it pulls up very nicely it's a great slick surface to work on that's a pretty nifty trick if you have freezer paper around just line your work surface with it um, it's fantastic for doing markers even alcohol inks it's so great gives you the opportunity for things not to necessarily stick it it does pull up after a while and gets, gets a little rough but overall creates a really great work surface just using the alcohol ink markers to darken that pink it was a little too light reinforcing that kind of hinge area and there we have that part and that's when I figured out oh I think I have it upside down so I needed to flip the magnets now one of the reasons that I left that particular panel the full size of the paint swatches is to accommodate that envelope which then again made me have to alter the, the thought of like the next one it needed balance and you'll see that coming up here as well these paint swatches were really fun to work with and there's some kind of tips and tricks about that which is that they are a matte type paint or that that's what's on there so they do scuff up and mark a little bit you have to kind of keep that in mind and then when they are modged podge they get really slick and show imperfections like a lot <laughs> so uh, there's some getting used to with working with those paint swatches this is I think this was the panel that made me kind of figure out that I liked that torn deckled edge and that was sort of the catalyst to the rest of them and why I decided to start changing even those two that you see currently the first two panels now most of the quotes and I think we have one definition in this particular in, in Twilight Hues they were done on the vellum but then we had to switch some of that up as well, in the end now when I did emboss the paint swatch there was some crackling and that's what you see me fixing there with the alcohol ink marker it's just something to keep in mind Now just creating the card that's going to go inside of the flower envelope. You'll see there that I left a little edge peeking out of the of the envelope because I wanted you to see that oh there's something to something to see there. vellum is one of those things that is really fun to work with but can be quite challenging at times especially with trying to figure out how to glue it down adhere it and now have found out that 
actually using the Tim Holtz Distress Glaze does work, or it did in particular with that, with the set of quotes and that color of ink. I know that different inks do different things. Um, but I think all future, all future vellum printed pieces probably will be done that way rather than our typical, our go-to, which is using the Mod Podge. I like that idea of bringing pieces from the back to the front and, you know, it, it, it continues. There's more fluidity to it. Here's one where I really wish I wouldn't have glued that down all the way like that because it left the marks of the glue. Kind of knew better, but you know. We live and learn. Had to reinforce those edges. They were kind of catching as pushing the, the little card in and out. I save all the little scrap pieces. I have bags of them. It's kind of like each project has its own bag of scraps. I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. I'm gonna do a complete scrap project. I love cleaning up those edges with the markers, just so there isn't any of that white showing through. Something to kind of keep in mind though with the embossed edges, it makes it a tad bit more difficult to clean those edges up. My poor sad crocodile. It is, uh, <laughs> it still has not been replaced. So the one end doesn't cut all the way. So I, I use it to kind of mark the spot and then bring my scissors around to, to finish it off. Just using the colored pencils to distress the edges a, a tad. Then the markers. Just seeing which one worked better. All right, so the Always awesome, Modge Bodge. That one actually turned out really, really well with Modge Bodging not only the the card, but the vellum piece. It, it, it flattened out very nicely, but two of the others did not. And I love how this particular flip panel, after the Modge Bodge went on, it just, it, it made the embossing really, really pop. And same for the, the envelope. The colors really, really started to come through so nicely. You can see that I went ahead and Mod Podge the flower before putting it on. And one of the reasons I did that is because sometimes the brusho in brushos, or the watercolor crystals in particular, especially red, bleed so it just didn't want to have any oops moments and since I had the Mod Podge out I went ahead and these are other printables you can see a little bit of the Calero sparkle that I did add to them and now I'm just, because I had the Mod Podge out, I'm going to go ahead and seal them. I have found I'm, I'm really liking this process of getting the papers Mod Podged even before I do anything with them. It makes them a lot easier to work with. And then I also kind of know what 
colors they really are going to be. The Mod Podge will make the colors come out more. I did fight with this one a little bit. <laughs> I almost didn't put it in the video, but I was like, that, that needs to be shown there. It did flatten out. So now everything has been Mod Podge and dried, and you can see I even put the flower onto the panel. And it was cool that the texture, even the magnets kind of showed through on the other side, but at the very end, you'll see that there were some ways that I, I, I sort of hid some of that. Now again, just coming back through, because it's very important on these projects that you reevaluate and figure out, okay, well, now I've used this and this one's completed. Now what does that mean for the next one? is our process. Comment below if that's kind of something, how, how, what is your process? How do, you, how do you work through these things? Is it ever evolving or do you have a, a very clear vision of what your end product is? Ours is never, <laughs> I usually have a, a good idea of what it is, but how I'm getting there, that, that that's the unknown. This is where, because as I had stated before, that I knew those first two panels just weren't right for what was happening in that third panel. So here I am starting to alter those to, to match up to the feel. It's not that they were bad, it's just they weren't great and you could see there's some smudgy parts up at the top when I accidentally hit it with some more Mod Podge and that bothered me so something definitely had to be done with that corner and already feeling so much better just those large blocks of color were, were pulling your eye too much to those corners and not letting you explore and those hard edges sometimes do that especially when they're darker colors and it just it was too much contrast over on those ends. And even after I had done this bit, there, th those middle sections just weren't right. They did not match up. All these papers are available. Well, most of these papers, the printed ones are from the Twilight Hughes printable set. Um, there will be a link below. I'll, I'll drop a card in at the top as well if you wanna click that link. And so this pretty much kinda is wrapping it up on these first three panels. Once again, thank you so much for watching. This was part two, there's a part one, and we're gonna be rolling into part three. I hope you'll stick around, watch that with us. We really appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, comment below, and subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to click the bell.